The reason why I bought the Xiaomi B7000 is because it is the cheapest Wi-Fi 7 router on the market right now, considering its features and the total available bandwidth, but there is one major catch. Since the version I got was directly from China, there is no support for the 6GHz radio band. Will that change in the future? Probably, especially considering that the chipset that Xiaomi used does have the support for it. But unfortunately the manufacturer doesn't really have a great track record of software updates and feature upgrades over the last few years. So how come it's called a Wi-Fi 7 router? It's because it does have some of the other features under the Wi-Fi 7 standard. The Xiaomi B7000 does support multi-link operation and there is support for the 160MHz channel bandwidth, but not for the 320MHz channel width. Instead, due to the multi-link operation, we can get a combination of 160 plus 80MHz as demoed by the Qualcomm and Xiaomi presentation last year. So yes, the B7000 is indeed a tri-band router. Furthermore, there is support for FDMA and Xiaomi claims this is the plus version. There's also Mumaimo and lastly, one very important addition that most other manufacturers are scared to implement is multiple 2.5 gigabit ports. Indeed, we got 4 multi gigabit ports that can work as either WAN or LAN. So let's have a closer look at the design of this device since it's one of the strangest looking routers I have seen so far. There are 7 external antennas surrounding the case, and no, they are not removable, but can be adjusted. And there are 2 extra antennas inside the case, one for the 2.4GHz radio and the other for the NFC. As seen on the case, there is a spot where you can touch your phone and pair the router to the app without having to enter a passkey. It's an interesting WPS approach, and I suppose better than the pin one. The case is entirely made of plastic and it's very narrow, but quite lengthy. It's also taller than most router I tested so far, forming a sort of triangular shape. And as we will see in the third on section, there is little unused space inside. So Xiaomi had to rely on lots of ventilation holes to keep the temperature low. One unfortunate design decision was to not add the option to mount the router on the wall. Sure, it sits nicely on the desk, but it's not a small device, so a couple of mounting holes would have helped a lot. As for the LEDs, there are two narrow ones on the front, one for the system, the other for the internet, and there is also one LED on the tip of the middle antenna. Not sure what its role is, but I guess it looks pretty. Now let's talk about the ports. While we usually get 4 LAN ports and at least one WAN port, the B7000 offers 4 ports in total. But I'm not really complaining because all 4 are 2.5 gigabit and you can choose whichever you want to function as the WAN port. Furthermore, we get a USB port, a reset button and a power connector which is proprietary. All those ventilation holes that Xiaomi put at the top and on the bottom of the case seem to be enough to push the heat out, and as we can see in the video that I captured with a the thermal camera, there are no hot spots. And this temperature was registered while the wireless router was running my usual tests, so it's not in idle mode. If you want to get a step-by-step -step guide on how to open up the Xiaomi B7000, I did a separate video that you can check. Essentially, there are 5 screws on the bottom, no warranty stickers, and it's fairly easy to reach the PCB. There is a large heatsink at the top and a heat spreader at the bottom, and you can also see the curious inner antenna design. I have displayed the main components here as well, so pause at any time to get a better view. Then again, I always add a comparison table at the end. Since the 6GHz radio is not supported, we're going to have to test just the 5GHz performance. And I have run a few single client tests using both Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 devices. I use the main 5GHz radio, the better one, and yes, there is a secondary 5GHz radio, which Xiaomi seems to suggest that is for gaming purposes. In any case, the throughput is excellent, reaching close to 2 gigabits per second, and this is using Wi-Fi. It goes head-to-head -head with the TUF AX4200, and even the better routers from Asus. And there is one other place where the B7000 excels and is the range. This is the best performance I have seen at this point in my house, but what about the signal attenuation? As expected, the Xiaomi B7000 reacts much better to interference and pierces farther than any other router, so at 70 feet I saw minus 77 dB when it's usually much more than minus 80 dB. And again, this is true both upstream and downstream. 
Now, compared to other routers, it does take second place, but only in regards to the throughput at 5 feet. If you check the throughput all the way down to 70 feet, the B7000 is the better device as long as the channel bandwidth is set to 160 MHz. When using the 80 MHz channel width, things do change, but it's still performing really well considering the price tag of the router. I also added the now obligatory long-term performance graph as well. I admit that I had some trouble testing multilink operation with other Wi-Fi 7 devices, and it's little I can do except wait until Linux and Windows 11 do add support to it and the adapter firmware follows suit. But this time I had enough waiting and decided to go with the experimental update for Windows 11, the one which supposedly has included support for multilink operation. But to check this out, first I only use the main 5GHz radio and the throughput is impressive, no doubt about it. Then I enable the multilink operation on the router which involves enabling the third radio as well and then aggregating the three bands together. I checked using the console and yes, the 2GHz radio bands were indeed aggregated. But then after running the same iPerf test, I got a worse performance than before. I will shift the blame on Microsoft since the update is still not actually done and I'm sure that using those expensive Wi-Fi 7 phones I could see a far better performance. But this is the only equipment I have available right now. As for the 2.4 GHz single client performance, since Xiaomi allowed me to choose the channel bandwidth, I selected the 40 MHz one. And the throughput is good, better than expected really. Also, the range is not bad either. When compared to other Wi-Fi 6 routers, it does hold its ground really well, going very near the GTX 6000 at greater distances than 30 feet. Now we finally reach the most interesting part, the multi-client tests. I continue to use the same NetHydra tools developed by Mr. Jim Salter, so let's start with the simulation of 1080p streams on 5 client devices. Be aware that only two are identical and some are Wi-Fi 5 while others are Wi-Fi 6 and 6C client devices. We can see that the latter perform really well, with the latency staying below 50 milliseconds for 95% of the time. There is a slight rise above it for 1% and there is also a problem client that will show very high latency. It displays the same behavior with all other devices and it's the fault of the laptop, not the router. I will replace it as soon as I have the budget, so it will take a while. Next, there's the 4K streaming on 5 clients with a cap at 35 megabits per second per device and things do change quite a bit. The Wi-Fi 5 clients jump immediately above 100 milliseconds, which is not ideal, while the other devices remain close to 80 milliseconds for 90% of the time. Could have been better, but I suppose it's still usable, especially since 5 percent of the time it did get close to 100 milliseconds. Afterwards, I checked the impact that the simulated intense browsing had on the continuous 1080p streaming latency, so in a sense we're now running a 10 device test. The graph shows that the Wi-Fi 6 and 6C clients remain very close to 50 milliseconds for at least 90 percent of the time, while the Wi-Fi 5 devices did struggle a bit more. The intense browsing graphic shows that the three clients remained underneath 300 milliseconds all the time, while two did rise slightly above one second. It's not going to have an impact on the the user that loads the page, so I suppose it's decent latency. The biggest curiosity came with the 4K streaming and intense browsing simulations because it seems that the router performed a bit better when it was put under more stress, and I will not complain about it. The browsing was also more than decent, so all is fine. Moving on, I added a bit more variety and included the downloading traffic. I ran it on two clients, each downloading 10 megabytes files continuously, while two other clients ran intense browsing and one handled 4K streaming. And the performance is actually better than expected. It is actually better than the TAF AX 4200 and overall the best performing router that I tested so far. Obviously, 300 milliseconds and above is not that great for downloading, or 250 milliseconds for 4K streaming, but it shows that with a bit of QoS, this router will do very well with multiple clients. Also, the total throughput was 538 megabits per second. Taking it down a notch, I let one client run the downloaded traffic, two for 4K streaming and two for the intense browsing. And yes, there is some improvement, but the user will still have to make some compromises for a good performance. The total throughput was 470.4 megabits per second. Let's cut the number of clients to three and let one handle the downloaded traffic, one for 4K streaming and one for the intense browsing. Again, the performance got better, although it's still not really ideal, especially the 4K streaming, which goes at about 200 milliseconds very quickly. The total throughput was 484.7 megabits per second. Still using the three clients, I let one download one megabytes files continuously, one to run the intense browsing and the last for voice over IP. And overall, these are good results on all clients, including the voice over IP and the download. Also, the total throughput was 189.6 megabits per second. Lastly, I let the five clients to 
download the 10 megabyte file continuously with no bandwidth cap or QoS enabled. And you can see the results for yourself. The total throughput was 458.8 megabits per second. Just like most Asus routers, the Xiaomi B7000 does have support for dual WAN and it's fairly simple to set up. Connect the cable to the port you want and then from the advanced settings choose the port for the secondary link. As usual, I pinged two sides and disconnected the main internet cable. This caused a single packet to be dropped, so I reconnected it and disconnected the secondary cable. This time two packets were dropped, so it's a very fast switch for a home suitable router. There is also link aggregation available in the form of LACP but I don't have an ass to test this feature. I also checked the power consumption of the router and used a smart relay that shows the values we want in its app. The Xiaomi B7000 router that I got is not really adjusted for the international market, which means that the software is available in one language, Chinese. And yes, that does mean that the installation wizard is a bit weird, but nothing the good old translation can't handle. I did want to first use the web-based interface, but it's mandatory to install and pair the router to the app in order for the setup process to finish. I will add an installation video very soon, so I don't blow this video more than necessary. The layout and options are very similar between the app and the web-based interface, so I use the latter for the convenience sake. On the main page we get to see the two or three radios depending on what you have enabled, each with its number of clients. You can check each of them individually and plug the internet connection if you want to. This is the route status page, so let's see the storage features. It supports Samba and the docker-based virtual memory. The CGI bin and Lucy in the address bar seems to show that the software is built on OpenWRT, even though the router itself is not currently compatible with OpenWRT, which is a shame. The Docker does significantly expand the app possibilities of the BE7000, so it's a major plus. Then, under common settings, we can access the Wi-Fi settings for enabling the third radio band, the multilink operation, Mumaimo, and adjust the options for each network. I expected a bit more from the security center since it only lets you create a device device blacklist, and there isn't much else here, so let's head over to the advanced settings. Here we can enable the intelligent QoS and I would have preferred a manual option, since I don't really trust these machine learning algorithms. There's DDNS and port forwarding as well as VPN, but only PPTP and L2TP are supported. Lastly, there's a network port customization where you can enable the dual WAN, IPTV, the LAN aggregation, and there's also the option to prioritize a specific port for gaming purposes. I also need to mention that it's possible to add a mesh subroute, which works very similarly to the SSI mesh and the TP-Link open mesh. That's about all for the web-based interface, so let's get a quick look at the mobile app. This is the first device that I tested, which has more features on the app, so we do get what is called the anti-hacking protection, which expands a bit on what is offered by the web-based interface. There's a family protection section which allows the creation of profiles and it's possible to select devices, set a schedule and choose the type of content that will be blocked. There are some other apps, of which a couple of them I have no idea what they are, although I guess one is related to gaming, so I do look forward to an English version of the software. Considering the price tag of the Xiaomi B7000, this is an excellent Wi-Fi 6 router. But can it be put next to the other Wi-Fi 7 routers as well? Not really, but it is in a category of its own. That's because it's made for the Chinese market where the 6 GHz radio band is not yet allowed. Xiaomi still wanted the router to be attractive to its domestic and even international public by implementing the multilink operation but without the use of the 6 GHz radio. It does work and with the right hardware I assume the performance will be better. In my tests, the device did well in both single client and the multi-client stress tests, but I do admit that the software is a bit strange, although it does feel like there is a lot of potential there. Perhaps the B7000 will receive an update and maybe the 6 GHz radio will be enabled since the chipset does support it. But I also know that Xiaomi doesn't have a very good track record of updating its devices, so I would not hold my breath. That's about all for now, don't forget to subscribe and like if you want. Thank you for watching and see you next time.